In this video, I'm going to show you how you can do the tool slide in 3D. So I've already done the few first few steps that the book is asking me to do. I've already downloaded the tool slide 3D exercise file. I saved it into my home directory in the as tool slide 3D. I'm in the model tab. The drawing was already in the model tab, but I know I'm in the model tab because the background is kind of white like this. Um, and the reason it's white is because I'm in a conceptual visual style. So. We also need to make sure that we're in the southeast isometric view, but first, before we do that, we would need to make sure that we're actually in the right workspace. So make sure that your workspace looks like this, where you've got box and extrude, you've got all of these 3D options. If you're not in a 3D workspace right now, what you're gonna do is, you're gonna pull down this menu up here, your workspace menu, and set yourself to 3D modeling. If you don't see that through the workspace pull down, if you click on the very last little icon on your quick access toolbar right here, that you can put check marks next to everything that you want to see up there, and I put a check mark next to workspace. I like to do that just because that way I can glance up here and see where my what 3D works, what workspace I'm in, and that I'm in 3D workspace. So once you've set that to be up here, then you can just click on 3D modeling. So now we're in that 3D workspace, and that's where we see the option for conceptual, which is what my drawing defaulted to. And then also right below that, we can set ourselves into south southeast isometric. My my drawing already had all of that set up for me. Now I do need to set my 3D layer current, so I'm going to come over here to layers and turn that 3D layer current or 3D layer on to make it current and I'm ready to get started. One thing I like to do and you will see me do this in all the videos is I turn off that grid. It's just a lot easier I think to work without all those lines. I can clearly see the objects and I can clearly see what I need to do. So what we need to do first is get rid of all the objects that we don't need in order to make this 3D. So I actually don't need these lines up here. I'm going to select those lines. I'm pressing delete on my keyboard. You can erase them with the erase uh, command as well. And then I'm going to get rid of all of this. These lines down here. Delete all of those. So I just have this little top piece right here. For now, this is all we really need to work with. The easiest way to do this command is to use the press pull command uh, to get this to be 3D. So I'm going to come up here under the modeling panel. I'm going to click on press pull. And what's awesome about the press pull command is just like the hatch command, you just click inside, anywhere inside that object, it finds the boundaries. I just click and here I go. I'm, it's, it's, it's already starting to extrude this out for me or press pull this and I just need to type in the distance. And so my distance here is three and it doesn't matter if you go up or down. It really doesn't matter at this point. So type in a distance of three. That looks good. This command stays active. I could end it and then start it again, but it stays active. So as long as it's active, I'll come over here, click inside this object and this is what? 2.25 it says looks good. So I'm going to press enter to finally end that command. I've already taken these two objects here. Now I need to rotate these objects. And so I'm going to start the 3D rotate command. I've got to rotate them, kind of flip them so that they're uh, right side up. So I'm going to click on 3D rotate. It's uh, up here in my modify panel. It looks like a little, a little atom up here. And so I click on this. It says to select the objects. I'm going to select both of those objects and press enter. And once I press enter, now I get this, um, these little rings of circles here. And so what those rings of circles do is they're, I need, they're specifying which way I want to rotate these objects. I have three different ways that I can do it. Now I do want to point out this UCS icon, their user coordinate system over here. The X axis is red, the Y is green, and the blue our, uh, the Z is blue. So when I'm looking at this, if I want to rotate on the X axis, the red circle is showing me what it looks like. So if I come across this X axis and rotate along it, this red circle is the pattern that I would be rotating, kind of the path that I would follow. If I want to rotate on the Y axis, I would be rotating along this green ring right here. That's the path. If I wanted to rotate along the Z axis, that's what this blue ring is doing. Notice when I get next to, I'm not clicking on them yet, but when I get next to any of these rings, they turn yellow. So what I wanna do is I actually kind of looking at this, I want them to follow this pattern, that red ring. 
is how I want to rotate. So I'm going to click on the red ring and notice I can just, I'm moving my mouse around. It's definitely got me locked into rotating on the x-axis, but I can just type in whatever angle I'd like. I could type in 90 degrees here. I could also turn on my ortho, which is also F8, and then you can see it just kind of jumps to <clears throat> the four different rotation angles that I can do. So I'll just click up here, or I can press 90, and I've got my objects rotated the way I want them. Press escape. I need to rotate this one one more time so that he can go sideways on top of that base. So I'm going to do my 3D rotate command. Make sure you've deselected or pressed escape. We don't want everything to rotate. Just this one. Press enter when I'm done. And then I'm going to rotate this one along the Z axis. So I'll click on that blue ring. And I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. This looks great. Now I'm going to use the move command. I'm going to select this object, press enter, select the midpoint, and I'm going to snap it to the midpoint here. It looks good. It's almost done, right? I'm going to go ahead and union. <clears throat> Both of these objects. Objects unioned. I'm going to do the move command again. So it's one big piece and I'm going to pick it up at the midpoint right here. And I'm actually going to snap it in this top view. I'm going to snap it to the midpoint. I'm going to turn off my ortho so I can kind of see where I'm going. Uh, make sure I'm right at the midpoint. There we go, midpoint. So this looks good. I can see the rings. This is the last thing that we need to do here. Now I could extrude those as cylinders and then subtract them from the object, but I actually, I think the press pull command is just so much easier. The press pull command, again, I'm clicking inside those circles. It defines those as a boundary. And then I pull. What it's doing is it's extruding that circle into a cylinder, but as it extrudes, it also subtracts that cylinder from the object, and that's only the, the press pull command. Otherwise, we would have to extrude those circles into a cylinder and then start the subtract command and come in here. But look, I'm just going to pull it, and you can really over-exaggerate how long it is, as long as you're sure that you went all the way through it. This side, click right in the middle, pull it all the way through, press enter, and I'm done. I'm going to hold down the shift key and my little mouse, uh, uh, IntelliMouse wheel, the little wheelie ball, just to look at this and make sure it looks good. And it does. I'm going to move this off to the side and then erase out all these lines that I have in here. I like to erase the lines just to kind of clean it up a little. And that's it. I am done with the tool slide 3D.